Hello! Welcome to Chewing the Cod. I have missed your faces. We have come back again to bring you some great showbiz news, some totally serious stuff from the World Wide Web, and another gripping instalment of one of our life lessons. Now, you don't think that I'm here all by myself, because I'm not. We have the man who knows the price of a pint of milk and a bottle of gin, if you don't want to know what the price of milk is. It's Mike, Benny and Roe. Hello. How are we doing? I'm a little bit sweaty today. It's, it's very warm in here. It's moist. Moist. Mm, yes. Shares dripping. Oh, I've noticed shares dripping, but <laughs> I just thought that was some sort of botched operation. Uh, and I've been ankle deep in the middle of the internet waves to find some fun things, including some glorious things you can be doing. Mm. And I have some great showbiz news, including a story about yet another remake. Oh. Mm. You can keep in touch with us on all the usual social media at the Cud TV. Our website is at thecud.tv. And if you want to listen to us as a podcast, search for Chewing the Cud. And if you've interacted with us on social media, then have a gander, not a goose, below my face, and you may see your name on screen. I've got a unique gesture for you if you win this weekly. As long as it's only with your hands, nothing lower. Oh. Okay. That's not going to work. Well, let's just play the game. Game of the Week. The producer is going on a date tonight with his lumberjack friend. He says they're going to the local forest and his friend is looking forward to getting his chopper out and showing him how he handles his wood. Is that even legal? But coincidentally, that segues nicely into the topic of this week's quiz. The producer has asked us to channel our inner Judge Rinder, or Judge Judy, and decide whether these laws are fact or fiction. You can go firstly. OK, so I've got to work out if it's a fact or if it's... If it's a real law or a fake law. Or a fake law. Yeah. OK. No person shall, in the course of a business, import into England potatoes, which he knows or has reasonable cause to suspect are from Poland. Mm. Don't bring no taties into this country if they're from Poland. Uh-huh. OK. Yes. I see. I, I think that's a real law. Do you? Yeah. Some of these laws are, like, really weird, obscure things, aren't mm -hmm. they? They're, they're all going to be weird, obscure things. You've yeah. our producer, right? Yeah. Do we not... What's the matter with potatoes from Poland? Well, Am I overthinking this? I think Poland was part of the Soviet Union. Oh, OK. And they might have had spy cameras in or, or explosives radioactive. or radioactive oh, potatoes. Okay. I'm, um, I'm going to say no. You're going to say no? No, I don't think it is. You say it is. I say it is, yeah. Let's have a look. Let's see what's going on with those potatoes. It's true. Oh. Is it still an existing rule, that? Or is it yeah. from yesterday? So these are all things that are still on the statute. Oh, right. Box. OK. I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, I was a craving for Polish potatoes. Polish potatoes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't. I won't. Okay. Well, you're, not, you're just not allowed to import them. You're allowed to eat them. You can eat them, but you can't import them. Yeah. And there lies the juxtapose. Oh, juxtaposition today. Yeah. Oh. Did you like that word? Someone's been eating his word a day calendar. Should we check the next one out? Go for it. It is illegal to carry a plank along the pavement as well as any ladder, wheel, pole, cask, placard, snowboard or hoop in the Metropolitan Police District. So you're not allowed to drag your hoop around the Metropolitan Police District. Um, it sounds like one of those like Victorian type laws, doesn't it? The snowboard. Well, it, I don't think it's. I think you misread it. It doesn't say snowboard. Does it not say snowboard? No, I think it egg? says. I think it says showboard. Oh, it says showboard. You're right. I don't know what a showboard is. Neither do I. That's why I read it. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Gallery. What's a showboard? Is it some? Oh, an A board. A what? You're not allowed to take your A board out. What's an A board? The thing that looks like the letter A. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with true, and I'm going to go with false. Oh, because I've been to that metropolitan area and I've I've seen people with their hoops. Did you get into trouble? No, I didn't. No, kept no. your hoop well covered. Yes. Okay. Let's see if Mike didn't break the law. It's true. I got it right. Let's have another one. I think it's it's a tie at the moment, isn't it? One one all one I a think piece. We're, we're, we're one each. Yes. One each. One okay. Each. Let's see. 
It is legal to shoot a Scotsman within the city walls of York other than on a Sunday. What do you think? I don't think so, not now. If you say that these are now current rules, mm -hmm. I don't think you're allowed to shoot us. Now it's... Oh. 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 It depends what <laughs> with. If it's like a blunderbuss... <laughs> <laughs> Because you're, you're renowned for carrying a, a piece of ancient weaponry around with you, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I keep one in my man bag. Uh, yeah, I can believe it. <laughs> um, or with a pea shooter. These are, the, these are the facts that it does not give you. <laughs> no. See, I think it's true that you probably still can do that. I don't think you're allowed to do that. Oh, I think it's false. Let's have a look. Let's reveal it. The leg end. Is it legal to shoot us? Oh, it's false. I was. I know I was right. You can't just go around shooting people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're not allowed to. No, you're not allowed to. Oh. Okay, so that's two. I'm keep, I'm keeping count this week. <laughs> yeah, no, two for me. <laughs> one for you. Let's reveal another rule. All males over the age of fourteen are required by law to practice longbow for at least two hours per week. Now, a longbow is, is like one of those things. It's not a euphemism. Thank you for... Okay. for um, Just in case you're concerned. Polishing up the longbows. Yes. Um, again, who, who, it, was, it, was a long, it was a longbow nowadays. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a blunderbuss, which, you know, blunderbus, not people which is very, very accurate. Um, <laughs> uh, you... I'm going to say false, although it, it, it could well be true. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it's true. It's one of those weird old English... Yeah, that they probably had on the statue books thing. They invented guns and went, well... Yeah. Keep it on just to, yeah, I yeah. think it's true. Should He's going to go true. I'm going to go false. Let's see. Is it true? Is it false? Oh, it's false. Air grab. <laughs> All right, Spando. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, um, I don't need to ask the gallery what, what the scores are, because it's three. Uh-huh. One. Okay. Let's, let's see which let's one I'm going to get right next. <laughs> it is illegal to handle a salmon in suspicious circumstances. What's a suspicious circumstance you could be handling a salmon in? It could be down your trousers. It could be... Why did you go straight for trout? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of trout tickling, but that's a whole different thing. <laughs> they might enjoy it, though, that. Um... <laughs> see, the audience at home couldn't see that lovely action you did with that whistle. That, I went like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you tickle a trout. <laughs> and it totally enjoys it. Um... <laughs> I think it is true. You're not allowed to suspiciously... Manhandle a trout. <laughs> Manhandle a trout. I also think it's true. Yeah. Should we have a check? Trouts are people too. <laughs> Let's see. Is it illegal? It's true, it's you're not. See, we. we... <laughs> <laughs> but we're still talking about trouts. <laughs> <I> don't... <laughs> salmon. Oh, why were we. What was I? Why were we saying trout, wasn't I? <laughs> you're not allowed to touch a trout. You can only, you can only molest salmon. <laughs> Leave the trouts alone. <laughs> Salmons are asking for it. <laughs> Shall we have one more? Go, go for it. It is illegal to attend a fancy dress party dressed as a policeman. Um, I would say if it's um, a saucy policeman mm -hmm. <laughs> with, like, garter belts and stuff, uh -huh. that's fine. OK. But if you're dressed as Juliet Bravo... Very accurately, I don't think you're allowed to. <laughs> don't know where that's coming from. Right, so the guy was just telling me what Julia Bravo is. Um, oh, it's not my fault, I didn't know. I think it's true because of the impersonating a policeman, and I don't think it matters whether it's a sexy one or a not sexy one. I think it's if you're wearing any kind of a thing. But you can get policeman uniforms from, from fancy dress shops, so if that was the case, then they wouldn't have them. So, I'm going to go with false. OK. Shall we have a look? Is it illegal to dress as a fancy... As a fancy dress as a... It's true. Oh! Mm. Mm. Not that I've been stopped and 
but that's what I was doing, uh, telling us. Not that you've been doing cavity searches on people dressed as a police officer. Have I not? <laughs> <laughs> Shall, shall we see who's... I think the tables might have turned. Who won there? Yeah. Yeah, you, you oh, I won, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, now that that triumph has concluded, stay there, as coming up is the next life lesson. But don't wander off without telling a responsible adult, as next it's Lee with Showbiz News. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now we go to the man who knows the reason Simon Cowell's pants get higher every year. It's Lee with the Showbiz News. That is because his legs are getting progressively shorter. Oh. Mm. Is he walking over cheese graters and things? Yeah. Okay. They're kind of wearing down, so he has to keep pulling them up. Eventually, they'll kind of just be there. Over his face. Yeah, just over his face. And then we'll all, we'll all breathe a sigh of relief. And will he be talking through the flaps? <laughs> just unzip. Zip him. Unzip him. No! <laughs> it's a note from me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, showbiz. News of yet another remake. Oh. And I'm not sure what, how I feel about it. I feel a little bit like, you know that meme that they have where the woman drinks a beer and goes, Ugh, and then tells another and goes, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel a bit like that about it. So, Death Becomes Her. Okay. What is, is an amazing film. Have it's, you, have you viewed it? Yeah. I have seen it. So they are touting a remake okay. of Death Becomes Her. Mm -hmm. And they are, the names that they're banding around are Anne Hathaway. Good choice, yeah, Playing I that. the um, part of, of Meryl Streep. Okay. Yeah. Goldie Hawn's actual daughter, Kate Hudson, to play the same role that Goldie played in the original film. Mm -hmm. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Gaga. As the kind of witchy woman that was... That was with the potions and the with lotions. With the lotions yeah. and the potions. Um, and Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. as the, the plastic surgeon figure that Bruce Willis played. Okay. Um, so I'm, I kind of like that cast. I'm a, I'm a fan of that cast. Mm. Lady Gaga was really good in American Horror Story Hotel mm. as the vampire witchy, so I could see her doing that. Um, but it's whether or not you can improve on a classic. Well, it depends what they're going to do. If they're going to try and outdo it, then I think that's going to fail. Mm. But if they try to do homage to it... An homage. Homage. And just yeah. redo it, I think that's, that's, that would work quite well. Yeah. Well, as predictably, the internet has gone mental with people mm -hmm. going, you can't do this, or yes, you can do this. I think it would be quite interesting to see Kate Hudson playing the role of that her mum played. Mm -hmm. That would be really interesting. I, Death Becomes is, is, is a fantastic film. It's really funny. Yeah. And quite dark as well. Yes. And the... Um, special effects, I think, still hold up. Oh, the, now, no, no, the special effects are shonky. Do you think, still? Yeah, they have aged horribly. Oh, I think they're still quite good. No. I mean, if you, if you want to see a badly done green screen, <laughs> um, watch our 100th episode. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah, we, we, we throw shade on that, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but Bruce Willis in that film... No, don't say it. I'm going to have to. No, don't say it. Little bit of a hottie. No, he wasn't. Why? He wasn't a hottie. He was. No, he wasn't. He was in a kind of daddy way. In a, in a your, your granddad kind of way. Oh. Sorry. Anyway, so there's no, there's no definite answer being given to this. It's kind of just rumours that are floating around. Mm -hmm. And quite often in Hollywood, something that's suggested never happens. But it could well be. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so let's let's see what happens with that one. Now, the next bit of celebrity news is something that I have tried myself this week. I, I read what they were doing and thought, I'm gonna dr I'm gonna try it. So, tree bathing. Right. Okay. Tree bathing. Tree bathing. So it doesn't mean that you fill your bath with leaves and twigs and get in it. It means. That you, the judgmentalness from you is just coming over in waves. So, this is genuinely a scientific thing, because I've made it up myself. No, but uh, originally, mm -hmm. tree bathing or forest bathing came from Japan. 
Okay. And it's, it's called, its original name is Shinrin-yoku, okay. which means forest bathing. And basically, what you do is you take a lovely, leisurely walk mm -hmm. in the woods or the forest, yep. and you take on the ambience of the, of the day and listen to the birds tweeting and people dogging in the bushes and... <laughs> so... Is there something you do after that? Because so far you've just described having a walk. Well, you know, it's more... You've got to be more aware than just having a walk. You've just got to... You've got to... You've got to... You've got to... See, look, the celebrities are doing it. Look, we've got Justin Bieber here. He's he, lying on grass. He's lying on the grass. There are trees above him. <laughs> OK. But still, he's lying on grass around trees. He's gone for a... He's gone for a picnic. No, clinically... Apparently, medically... Uh-huh. This has an, an actual impact on your, to lower your stress levels. It elevates your memory mm -hmm. and, it, and it lowers the, the stress cortisol in your brain. Okay, uh, like a walk does. No, it's a proper thing. It's called forest bathing. <laughs> so even, even... Oh, well, in that case, I'm going for some duvet bathing later, a nap. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what celebrities do. So it doesn't work. <laughs> We've got a picture of Kate Middleton. She's a big oh, fan of forest right, bathing. Okay. Um, yeah, look at her. She's on, she's on a big ball in the forest. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so she, she promotes it. Um, mm. We've got Celine. <laughs> so, so Kate Middleton is swinging in the forest and she's promoting it. Yeah, she, she says she, she, whenever she meets somebody, whenever she's doing one of those royal walkabouts, she shakes their hand or at the moment just kind of goes like that and goes... <laughs> And goes, go for his bathing. It's great. Okay. Yeah. Well, even, even Celine Dion's been getting in on the act. Oh, well, if Celine Dion... Let's have a look, let's have a look at Celine. Oh, well, if, if Celine Dion's doing it, then it must be a valid and actual thing. But I'm not the type of person that will just watch or read something on the news or in a magazine and just take it as, 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 as Bible. I did it myself. I went out... For a walk. And I went forest bathing. We've got a clip of it here. Hi, it's me. Just doing a little bit of forest bathing, like what the celebrities do. And um, I'd like to introduce you to, to Engelbirch Cumberbatch, my new life partner. So you're naming, you're naming trees on your walk? Gives me wood. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that, that is a meaningful relationship. OK. That will last until it dies. Well, trees last quite a long time, so I yeah. think it might outlast you. Yeah. I think you're going to be leaving it to a widower. I felt replenished afterwards. Glad. I did. I'm it was I'm glad I, I urge you... everybody to try it. I'm so glad that going for a, a, a completative, completative, going, going, going for a walk um, and having a think is good for you. Hug a tree. That feels good as well. You're absorbing all that history and the wood <laughs> and splinters. Absor absorb wood. OK. Okie dokie. Let's move on to something a little bit more lowbrow for my last bit of showbiz news. So Ozzy Osbourne, he's back in the news. More and do you know why? Go on. Why is Ozzy Osbourne? Ozzy in Osbourne is saying that you'd be fucking mad not to believe in aliens. Okay. <laughs> 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 and that's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, what? He, th there is, there is, there is a reason behind this. Okay, so there's a, he's not just, he's not just, he's not, not just, just spouting off gone. random uh, 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 vanities. No. Okay. Um, the Osbournes uh, uh, got a new television program, um, uh, okay. and it's called "The Osbournes Want to Believe." Right. So we've got a picture of it here. Um, it's hosted by Jack Osborne, mm -hmm. and Sharon and Ozzy are in it. Is Kelly in it? I don't think she is. Oh. Whether she's kind of makes a cameo, I don't know. But basically, what they do is Jack Osborne is really into like paranormal and conspiracy theories and, mm -hmm. and, and science fiction and stuff. Yep. He's had a, he, ha, he has his own like ghost hunting show. He does. Yeah. Um, you, you aware, are you aware of this? I am aware of it. Are you a fan of this? I'm not a fan of it, but I have watched it. Have you? I watched it once. I watched it once because someone sent me a message going, "Are you watching this on TV now?" Because Jack Osborne's grown up a little bit attractive. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, so I'll watch there's it. A, there's a slight, there's a slight Zac Efron vibe about him. Ish. Um, <laughs> that's not Zac Efron. <laughs> <laughs> that. 
<laughs> That's Ozzy Osbourne if he was an alien. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, so what they do is, each episode, Jack comes and gives them this scenario or story, and mm -hmm. then they have got to work out whether or not they believe it's true or not. So he has to present the evidence, right? and his mum and dad have to say, yeah, we believe it, or no, that's a pile of old tud. Oh. Um, it's eight one-hour-long episodes. That's, that's a long time to that's say, no, hours. I don't believe in ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe in ghosts. Um, but he's, yeah, so he, he believes that, Ozzy Osbourne believes that, that we would be stupid to believe that there are not other life forms, mm -hmm. yet he doesn't believe in things like the afterlife and reincarnation. Okay, well, well I mean, it's mathematically, everyone's gone to sleep now, I can just see him. You wake up. Well, mathematically, there should be other life out in the universe. Mm. Right, so speaking, because if not, there's a, a lot of waste of space. Yes. Yeah? Um, whether it would be so like, intelligent enough to come here and be fast and speed light, I don't think so. So I don't think we're going to get visits. I don't think we're going to have a little ET going, phone home, and then you have to explain long distance to him. Um, but I, I think there's stuff out there. But if there is, or oh, we're getting deep now, deep for this show, why have they not been, why have they not made their presence known before? What if they're at the other end of the universe? That's going to take so long to, no. So I agree with Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Ozzy Osbourne? I know, oi, I'm, oi. I'm, I'm concerned that I've just agreed with Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, okay. I'll have a bit of a moment. Well, that show has just recently launched on streaming services. Okay. So go and check it out and see if you too believe in aliens and ghosts and werewolves and stuff like that. Great. Well, thank you very much, Lee. And coming soon, it's better than eating beans direct from the can. It's our life lesson. Don't Google things you can do in three minutes, because coming up after the break is Mike in the Buzz. Welcome back to Chewing the Cod. Now it's time to go over to the man who has a constipated buzz about him. Sorry, I mean, I mean, <laughs> constant, constant buzz about him. Sorry, it's Mike. <laughs> Do you need some prune juice? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm quite regular. Thank okay. you. It was just that straining I had. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't anything you needed to hear about. <laughs> Let's move on quite quickly, shall we? Um... I have been rummaging around in the internet to see what I could find, and I found a, a lovely little story, something light-hearted. Oh. Um, we've all seen them as you go around, those little posters up with take a number, so like guitar lessons, take a number, you tear yes. off, off have, the bottom. Yes. Because as people we can do that, but what about our feathered friends? Emus. Pigeons. 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 Okay. Flying street rats, as they're also known. <laughs> <laughs> So what he's done is he's actually put up a poster for pigeons. For pigeons. It says, tired of being a bird, and he tapes it up, and what do you think happens? <laughs> they come and, and peck away and take the, take the numbers. <laughs> so That's weird. <laughs> Has he, has he... <laughs> oh! <laughs> that one is tired of being a bird. That, be one's, <laughs> that one's to take over the world. That, that is weird. I thought that was lovely. Has he had any calls? He's apparently, not many, no. Um, they, he's had... they can't put the numbers in with their little clawed feet, can they? They could use their beak. They could. I never thought about You've that. You've not thought this through, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> or they could just carry their own message. Yeah. Because they're pigeons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got lots of ways of getting communication out with pigeons. Yeah. yeah. Have you, would you ever have one of those little posters up? Saying what? Advertising your services. Do you know what? This is really cheesy. I once put up one in work that really? said... No, literally, this is, how, this is really... Cheesy. And it said, need a smile? <laughs> Please take one. And on the bit at the bottom, <laughs> I'd put smile. <laughs> they could just take a smile. How'd you lace them with LSD? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. pop it on your tongue. <laughs> and you can't have a smile, but you and can see the walls the world melt. Move round. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yes. 
that's 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 very special. <laughs> 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 that is one step away from the, the going out and just r hugging random strangers. Free hugs. Free hugs. Not at yes. the moment, though. No, not at the Stay moment. Stay safe. No. Spray them with bleach. Don't spray people with bleach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do not spray people with bleach. <laughs> keep yourself suit. safe. And keep that's yourself what we to need yourself. To do. <laughs> no touching. Um, and let's let's shall we shall we move on? Let's move on before shall the police on? come to arrest me. Yes. <laughs> um, Talking of keeping safe. Okay. Okay. Um, there has been new guidance come out from our generous overlords, or the government as also known, mm -hmm. about what you can and can't do during the pandemic. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, some people have been feeling the pinch of not being able to enjoy relations with other people. Literally. Well, they're not feeling the pinch, Well, they're not are feeling they? the pinch, no. Yeah. Um, they're feeling the frustration and anger mm. and the, the constant desire to rummage around in somebody else's nether regions. Blue balls. Indeed. <laughs> well, there's good news out there for everybody. Hooray! As it's <laughs> I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> there's good news out there for everybody, especially for Lee. <laughs> um, because it has been announced that you can now safely use glory holes. What? Yeah, so health officials have recommended using glory holes for safe sex during the pandemic. So, for, for those viewers who are not sure what a glory hole is, mm -hmm. would you like to explain that to us, please, Mike? It is a, a hole in a wall or a cubicle of a toilet or just a hole randomly anywhere um, <laughs> that a gentleman can, can flop his member through. Is it just for gentlemen? You can't flop a member through if you've not got a member to flop through. <laughs> can, <laughs> can ladies just not press their vaginas up against a hole? Well, I, 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 they might be able to. Okay. We don't know about those I things, don't know do about we? It. If, if Lee would like to know, so if you want to email Lee at the could <laughs> yeah. I'm with... <laughs> very interested. Genuinely, is there, is there a female equivalent of a glory hole? I, I'm sure there must be. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, this, this particular article doesn't say about Oh, female, it's just all just, about... It's all about... It's popping, all about the patriarchy. It's, it's popping <laughs> things through. Right. So what they've recommended, that if, when you pop your member through the hole to get it serviced, that you wear a condom, and because of the, the wall between you and the other person, you're technically social distanced. Okay. So no, no contact will happen. Mm. And no bodily fluids. So you can't catch, or you're very unlikely to catch, the rona while using a glory hole and a condom. <laughs> because public toilets are notoriously clean, aren't they? Oh, yes. Uh, you could eat your dinner off most toilets. Yeah. Experiences. Press yourself up against that wall. There's not a, not a germ on it. No. Mm. <laughs> OK. And obviously, you'd wipe down afterwards and sanitise the service, ready for the next person to come along and use the glory. Leave a little note. Little note. <laughs> Take a uh, smile. On the, on the... <laughs> <laughs> I think you're leaving a smile if you don't use <laughs> the glory hole. <laughs> I've left a smile. <laughs> Just wipe it up. <laughs> And if something catches your eye on the internet, why not share it with us? Just look for The Could TV on your, all your usual social media platforms. We are delighted this week to receive a letter from Mrs. Belinda Mycock in Cockermouth. And she writes... Dear Chewing the Cud, do penguins have knees? Yours, Belinda Mycock. Oh, Belinda, that's a question that keeps me awake at night. Why would you ask that? Keeps me awake at night wondering whether penguins have knees. Yeah, it does me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. No. One assumes. Is it like, right, because on the internet there was this thing where somebody had got uh, an owl. <laughs> this is a story. Somebody got an owl, right? Um, and they'd like plucked the owl. No, they haven't they plucked the owl. They just pulled, they just the, pulled feathers the feathers up. up yeah, and its legs it's went on for like yeah, yeah. two days. Yeah, yeah, all the way to the bottom of its body. Yeah, yeah. under its head. Um, so if that, <laughs> if that is the case, then who knows what's underneath a, 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 a penguin's penguin. fur, feathers, feathers. <laughs> fluff. Hmm. Have you ever picked up a penguin, Mike? No, but I've had a cockatoo. <laughs> and that brings us to the story of the week. Um, and this comes direct from the Telegraph. Yes, yeah, so it's Posh. a reputable Lancashire Telegraph. Um, and this is a story about a man and his wife who have both pleaded guilty and been convicted for having sex with chickens. So the gentleman has had sex with a chicken uh, while his wife has filmed it. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it wasn't me dressed as a chicken. <laughs> Tell me more. So, so he was having sex with a chicken. And his wife filmed it. And he, she was filming it. Yes. Okay. I want to say a chicken. Um, three chickens. At the same time? Over the course of an afternoon. Oh! Okay, not like all of the, like... No, like... it wasn't It wasn't a, a group group <laughs> session of chickenness. A chicken orgy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I think I've had too much chicken when I've had 20 chicken yeah. nuggets. Well, that, that... That... That's a lifestyle choice. Yes. Um, so... He, there's there's a, a, a darker side to it, but we're not going to go there. Dark meat and light meat. No, there's a darker say. side <laughs> as he has, has been convicted of other things. In other all, things. Other things, yes. Doing... Mm. Mm. However, um, the chicken section was the, the highlight of, of the case where he, he was found guilty of doing explicit things in an explicit and realistic way. Oh. Did, the the, um, did the chickens have to give evidence? Um, no, they didn't. Like, from a dark... <laughs> Just the outline of a chicken. <laughs> yeah, we did it. <laughs> really? Um, I really liked it. <laughs> pleaded guilty to a charge of it. Intentionally performing an act of penetration <laughs> um, with your penis on the vaginal and anal passages of the chicken. I... While his wife filmed. Ooh. Fun for all the family. What happened to her? Um, she was also found guilty of aiding and abetting and filming an indecent act. What did you, <laughs> <laughs> what did you expect to, to, be, to happen I, to her? I don't know. It could have been sent to, you know, world's funniest home video. Something like that. <laughs> Next week on You've Been Friends. <laughs> Bestiality! <laughs> Oh, oh well. Have, have you ever filmed anything you shouldn't be doing? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say. I thought you were going to say, have you ever filmed a chicken, Lee? <laughs> no, because that would be illegal. Have you ever filmed anything you shouldn't have been doing? No. <laughs> no? Never. Ever. No? No, I can't think of a single... <laughs> Is that... I can't think of a single occasion where I've been filmed. <laughs> what have been doing? But what that's about you? All, like, I have, but that's all the time we've got for the this week. Well, thanks, Mike, for that, for that <laughs> disturbing end. Um, you've just enough time to nibble the chocolate off your favourite chocolate biscuit before we skip to our life lesson. <laughs> Welcome back. I genuinely can't believe what I witnessed him doing with a finger of fudge during the break. But now it's time for this week's... Life Lessons. I don't know what you mean. It was quite a reasonable way of eating a finger of fudge. I've never seen somebody eat something so quickly. Yeah, well, it was only, it was only a, a small one. So, yeah. This week's life lesson... We're going to be teaching you a fun thing to do with oranges. Okay, so do you have your orange? I do. Your orange spheroid. I do. Lovely. And then the other thing you need is a lovely sharp knife. I've got a selection of two. Oh, because I'm a ninja. No, because I didn't know which was sharpest. Which was sharpest. One is serrate. I'm going to go for the plain one. Okay, so I've, I've gone for a rainbowy one. Oh, fancy. So when you... Like, oh, shiny. Oh, isn't, oh. That, isn't that pretty? Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this into a man. <gasps> is that the answer to all your prayers? Um, no, because it's it's only a man this big. Oh. Okay. It's not like a magic bean. It's not like a magic bean. Okay. No. Okay. Now you need to be very careful because you're going to be using the very tip of your knife. Okay. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off at the, at the, at the tip of the orange. Where the little nubbin is. Where your nubbin is. Yeah. Okay. And that nubbin's going to form the back of his head. Okay. So you want to put a circle around the outside of his head. Yeah. Draw a circle with the knife. Well, no, no, cut a circle with the okay. knife. Because <laughs> drawing it isn't going to be very helpful. You just want to go just deep enough to get into the flesh. Into the flesh. Into the flesh. And of course, don't complete the circle. Oh, don't, don't. Okay. No, because you need to be the head, so you should have it. 
should have a head like that. So you should have a all the way and then it's attached here. Okay. And your fingers will smell lovely while you're doing this as well. Citrus. Orangey, almost. Okay, are we there? Are we yes, done? yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Deep in thought. So, of course, you need to give him a little neck. So you pop a little neck down. So two little lines from the tip. I don't know where I don't know what I'm doing now. So where you've just you've left the gap at the bottom of his. Oh neck. yeah, yeah. And yeah. um, we're going to put two little lines just to make a little bit of a neck. Oh right, okay. Okay. And then we're going to go out towards an arm. It's exciting, isn't it? An arm. An arm. How do I do that? So, I've just I've just just done it on mine so you can see. So, you can see I've drawn. It's like an S shape. So that's the neck going down towards an arm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Prue Leaf. <laughs> That's what you call me, a leaf? <laughs> <laughs> okay, because what you're basically going to do is draw the outline of a man. Oh, right, just draw an outline of a man in, in, the, in the skin. In the, in the skin, but it needs to be hugging the, the orange. All the way around? Not all the way around, about halfway around, about there. Okay? Yeah. And once you've done an arm, you need to go into a bit of a body. Literally can't... You're literally carving a man into an No, but I literally can't see what I've scraped. <laughs> Are you going quite deep? Ish. Because you need to be hitting the flesh. If you're not hitting the flesh, it won't work. Okay. I'm dripping. You're dripping? Mmm. What about the orange? <laughs> I think mine's going to look like chunk off. The Goonies. No, Sloth. Sloth off the Goonies, okay. So do you put, do you, do you put legs in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just sucking between his legs because there's juice coming out. Oh, man. It's getting Ooh. a little bit. So I'm just going to keep cutting round. I think I've created a butt. You think you've created a butt? Yeah. So the middle of his legs ideally should be in the, in the other end from his head. So his head's at that end, and then his, between his legs is there. Okay. So between his legs there should be a little dot. Now this life lesson was kindly sent in by a viewer called Ray, so thank you for this, Ray. Well, we judge of that when I've finished him. <laughs> he sent the life lesson, we're doing it, it's our fault if it looks do, do you do you do you separate the the hands? Do you give do, do, or do you just leave it all attached? Oh, you leave it all attached. Okay, so you don't you don't cut across to make a hand. No, 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 no. don't cut because that that's not going to work. Okay, and then once you've drawn it, you, once you've drawn the outline of your man. Yep. Yep. You peel away everything apart from the man. So you want to go in, and where you've not got the man, you peel away. Oh no. <laughs> You've gone a little bit too deep there, I've haven't you? I've gone too you? deep. I've gone too deep too far. I mean, there's certain times and that's a bonus. Yeah. But I'm, not. <laughs> I'm, I'm now juicy. Not when you're juicing your... Okay, so I... I uh... So you now need to peel the other side of the orange. <laughs> no, this, is, this does not bode well for me because I've gone that deep. <laughs> because it's going to make the next thing impossible to do. <laughs> and then all we're going to do is peel away the arms, legs and the top of the head from the orange. I've not, I've not unpeeled everything yet. You know when you go to the zoo? Yeah. And you see like, um, <coughs> zookeepers giving monkeys a like monkey's head off. <laughs> Oh dear. So enrichment. Yeah. Like in the so this is like an this is like a monkey enrichment <laughs> for humans. Yeah. This is this is enrichment for human beings. Yeah. So d does all all of the peel have to come up apart from the apart from the body? Yeah. Okay. Because what you should be left with, if you've not torn its actual head off, is pretty much a man holding an orange. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and peel this quick. There are other uses for, for orange peel. Really, like what? If you put them on your garden, mm -mm. Um, it keeps um, cats away. 
All right. Yeah. Does it not attract flies and wasps with it being orange? Um, well, well, you put in the skin, so there's no, there's no flesh. No, but they smell it, don't they? Yeah, but they can't get, any, they can't get anything out of it. Okay, I'll believe you. I'll... And that is my tip. Yeah. <laughs> From me to you. Yes. So Lee's given us his tip. Have you, have you ever at Christmas time um, sliced orange and then put it in the oven and um... and dried it out? Yeah. I have, I have friends that do that. However, of course. A, a, a church-going family. We we help out with the Christingle. Christingle. So that's where you, you get oranges and stick dolly mixture in cocktail sticks on the outside and put a candle in it. And Jesus said that we have to do this? Not quite. It's a tradition. Okay. It's a brand um, new tradition. Uh, you had me at dolly mixtures. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You, you have to use dolly mixtures. It can be other sweets as well. Could I just eat a chocolate orange? You, you can just eat chocolate orange. Yes. Okay, right. It's not quite the same as going to church and going to a service, but you can no. just eat a chocolate orange. The feeling's there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, um... And so you peel the man away. I... So you carefully peel his legs and arms away. Not his head. And his head. And right. his head. I just got a bit too overzealous with the head and... Um, died. Okay, uh, and, then, uh, and then just leave him... Do you leave any bit of him attached at all? Just his stomach. Oh. So really, his middle should be deep inside the orange. So it should look like that. So technically what we're making is a man bumming an orange. Yes. Okay. Or, or cuddling. Or cuddling. I, I made a bit of a mistake and he's just attached by his neck. Okay. So that's, that's slightly different, but that's, that's okay. So let's see, yours looks good. Thank you. Yeah, yours still, yours still at least got a head. So yeah. <laughs> so we're being asked in, in, the, in our ear what the point of this is. There is no point to this. This is just a fun thing you can do with fruit, a knife, and a lot of wet wipes because you're very sticky at the end. That's great. Mm. Okay, I'm just... Oh, okay. I'm just going to pop that down. I, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not a massive fan of, of orange. Are you not? No. That's a shame for you. Okay. I'm just going to. Right. Okay. Okay. So we have nearly come to the end of the show, but if you can't wait a week, you can always find us on the internet. Just search for the Cud TV on social media, the Cud TV for our website, and while you're on the website, have a look for the support section for exclusive clips. Before we go, let's have a look at the picture of the week, which comes from Mrs. Mahogany Commode, who spends her days in Hampshire's Sandy Bowls. Yes, that really is a place. And she writes... Dear Chewing the Cud, I thought you'd like to see a really filthy dick pic. This one always makes me smile. Yours, Mrs. Mahogany Commode. Oh, that Ooh. is a filthy dick. I like a filthy dick, though. Yeah. Do you, does it not put you off what comes out of his mouth? What comes out of his mouth? The dodgy accent. All right, my darlings. What was that accent? I think, I think, <laughs> I think it's best that we end the show now. Okay. Stay safe and we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>